Hello everyone, in this video we will learn how to create a REST API using Next.js 14's new app directory structure. A REST API or Representational State Transfer Application Programming Interface is a way to build web services that allow different applications to communicate with other over the internet. With the release of Next.js 14, the team introduced a new file-based routing system called the App Directory. This new structure simplifies the process of building APIs and provides a better performance and developer experience. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a solid understanding of how to create API routes, handle different HTTP methods, implement error handling and validation and deploy your API to a hosting platform. Let's start by creating a new Next.js project. So for that, open your terminal and type the command npx create next-app at latest and your project name and press enter this will ask you a few questions about the options of your project so you have to select the appropriate options depending on your needs uh, i would suggest you to select the app directory and select the typescript and sas as well once you have selected and the project has been installed you will have your project with the app directory structure enabled once the installation is completed navigate to the project directory by using the cd command we will install a dependency called Axios which is popular library for making HTTP requests so let's do that I already have installed my project and it is currently working in VS code so let's open a new tab here in the terminal and here I will run the command npm install Axios press okay now let's explore the project structure you will notice the app directory in the source directory which is where we will be creating our api route so in next.js api routes are defined inside the app slash api directory so let's create a new file called route.ts in inside app slash api slash users direct so right click on the app directory click on the new file and type the path of the file that would be api slash user slash route.ts now let's add the basic code in this file so here i will add export async function get request add a type here okay now let's add try catch block in the try block i will create a constant response is equal to await is await and axios make sure to import the axios from the axios library and use the dot get function here we will use the json placeholder as our api endpoint and once we get the response we will return new next next response dot json and pass the and pass the response dot data in the cache block we will return next response dot error and here I will type provide the type any instead of error I will use JSON so in this code we are importing the axios library and defining the get function that fetches the data from a mock API that is JSON placeholder the get function is an async function that makes the HTTP request HTTP get request using axios.get if the request is successful it returns the response data as JSON if there is an error it returns an error message with the with the status 500 so to test this api endpoint let's start the development server by running the npm run dev command i already have ran that command so it is currently running in my terminal and also it is running in the browser so once the server is running you can access the api endpoint at this url by running the command slash api slash users press enter. Okay, you can see that the data is coming from the axios so you can also test this endpoint using the tools like postman or curl curl in the terminal copy the url here i will type paste the endpoint press enter and you will see that the data came in. so this should return the list of users from that mock api now we will talk about handling different http methods in the rest api we typically need to handle different http methods for performing various operations so let's modify our route.ts file to handle the post put and delete request so let's go to the vs code and i will add other methods port async function post method and within that we will get the data from the request body so for that i will create a constant data is equal to request.json here let's just add request now i will have to add wait here because this json would return us an 
uh, return us a promise and here i will create a constant new user is equal to id let's add any random id and here i will spread my data object so let's say here we have the users array and it has different users okay it has some users and here we can return those users without using the exist time so i can simply return the users array to get request and now we can simply push the users and the place of id we can make it unique by adding the one in the length of the users array now at the end we will return next response.json new user with the status 201 in the if there is an error then the catch block we will return error now I need to implement the put method. So this is the put method. I got the data from the body and we are getting the index of the user. And now we are getting updating the data of that user with the new data that came in. And once it is updated, we will return the status 200. And at the last, we need to add the delete method. So this is the delete method that is getting the data from the body. And then we are getting the index of the user that is coming from the body and we are using the applies function to delete that specific so let's save it so in this updated code we are using a mock array of users for demonstration purposes the get function now returns the entire list of users the post function handles the creation of new users it reads the request body using the request.json and send creates a new user object with a unique id the new user is then added to the users array and the new user object is returned as the response the put function handles the updating of an existing user it reads the request body Body which should contain the user ID and new name. So if a user with the provided ID exists, the name is updated and the updated user object is returned. So if the user is not found, an error response with the 404 status should be returned. Or, or if there is an error, then it will return the 500 status. So let me quickly add the implementation if user not found. Okay. So here we can check. Okay, let me check. If index is negative one, then that means user was not found, and we are now returning the user not found error with the 404 status. Similarly, in the delete, we have to check the index. So the delete function handles the deletion of user. It reads reads the user ID from the query. It gets the user from the payload from the body if user with the provided id exists then user is removed from the users array and deleted the and the delete, deleted user object is returned if the user is not found an error response with the 404 status code is returned you can test these different endpoints using tools like postman or curl like we did before so for example to create a new user let's use the curl so open your terminal and the command curl dash x post h so we have provided the content type and we are passing the parameters now press enter then you will get the response back okay the id is three the user has been. to update an existing user <coughs> let's run this command so we are updating the user with the id one press enter and the name has been updated. now to update the user let's run this curl command we are hitting that endpoint with the id2 but as uh, but uh, in order to receive id from the url we have to update our code accordingly so here instead of getting it from the request.json let's use this approach here i will type any and we are getting the url from the uh, we are getting the url and we are extracting the id ID from the URL search params and then we are getting the index okay so when the user will be deleted we will save it in the user object and we will pass that as the rest now let's give it a quick try so I'm going to hit it and you can see that it has returned us the user with the ID 2 that has yeah. been deleted next we will talk about the error handling and validation in a production environment it's environment it's essential to handle errors and validate user input to prevent security vul vulnerabilities and ensure data in integrity so let's implement error handling and input validation in our API. First, we will install the Zord library, which is a TypeScript first schema validation library. So let's do that. Here in my root directory of my project, I will run the command npm install Zord. So once it is installed, we will update the route.ts file with the error handling and input validation okay the zord has been installed now let's go to our route.ts file on the top i will import the zord library okay now we will create zord schema for user input validation so here let's create user schema so here i will add the name property and it has to be string and the minimum length should be 3 and max should be 50 okay now let's go to the post method and here after getting data from 
from the body we will value we will get the validated data by using the user schema dot parse and we will pass it the data so as it is in the try catch block so if there is an error it will automatically be caught in the catch block now instead of instead of passing this data i will pass the validated data and here add any hatred of this error for now now let's go to the error catch block section and here we will check if this error is the instance of zord error then we will handle it differently if error instance of instance of zord error then here we will return here i will mention error dot issues and okay and we are passing the status 400 and if this is not a zord error then it will by default fall back to this error so in this updated code we have imported the zord object a z object from the zord library and defined a user schema a user schema that validates the name property of the user object the name must be the string with the length between 3 to 50 characters in the post function we are now using the user schema dot parse method to validate the request body before creating the new user if validation fails a 400 bad request status code is returned with if there is an unexpected error then a 500 internal server error status code is returned so you can test this input validation by sending sending the request with an invalid name value so let's try open the terminal and clear and now you can see that i am passing the name with the character length one because the minimum length should should be three so let's see what happens if you press enter you got the error it is saying that we have issues too small minimum is three and string must contain three characters okay so so this should return a bad request status code with this uh, validation error next we will talk about the deploying to deploying the api once you have completed the development of your api you will want to deploy it to a hosting platform for production use so nextjs provides a provides several deployment options including versal netlify and self hosting for this tutorial we will demonstrate deploying to api to versal which is a popular hosting platform optimized for nextjs application first create a new github repository and push your project code to it okay so we uh, i already have initialized the github uh, git here and i will just need to uh, commit my changes and then i will push so let me quickly commit it and then we will upload by pushing okay i just have pushed the changes next you need to sign up for a versal account if you have not already and connect your github repository to versal once connected versal will automatically detect your next yes project and provide you with a deployment url so let me quickly do that in front of you so i already have created the next Yes, project i already have the versal account created that you can see in my previous videos that we did and now we need to link this repository with that so let's go to the versal go to the login to login and click on continue with github to login once logged in it will take you to the dashboard now i am on my dashboard so here i will click on the add new click on the project and here it will ask you to import a git repository okay i have connected uh, my repository this is the repository so if you click on the import it would be imported and it will suggest to you the name of the project uh, it will take it from the repository name you can modify it if you want to and it will automatically uh, detect the framework we are currently using nextjs then it will so pick the root directory here you can modify all of these settings if you want to but you will not need to do that in most of the cases so you just need to click on the deploy click on that and the app would be deployed so it will take some time you can watch the build process by expanding it and here you will see the progress once it is done it will provide you a url that you will open to access it all right it has been deployed congratulations and now click on the continue to dashboard for the project and on this page click on the visit it will take you the domain of your project and you can see it is live now you can access your deployed api at the provided url and start integrating it with your front-end applications or other services so let's quickly test it copy the url and go to the terminal and here let's i want the get method that so you can just place it with the new url add slash api slash user press, press enter actually there is a problem because uh, it is not uh, being accessible because i pushed it to a different branch but it is trying to access it from the main branch so we have to fix that so let's edit the configuration go to the setting go to the git and here we have to specify so if your project on the main branch then you don't have to make anything but if it is on different branch then you 
we have specified so it is the rest api branch so add it save it and once it is saved let's build it once again as you can see it used the main branch now i want to create new deployment so i want to use rest underscore api okay i fixed the branch now i have selected the correct branch adding it by okay i got an error let's see what it is saying that it has invalid get export type next api request is not a valid for the functions for target so it should be next request request or next case okay, so let's fix it okay, in the get method i add this and you can import it from next slash over and <clears throat> we can add it everywhere okay now let's uh, make the commit and over i have committed now let's push it get push origin rest scrape okay i have pushed my changes to the github now let's go back here and we'll watch the progress for the deployment you can see that deployment has been started automatically click on that deployment to watch progress okay the deployment has been completed without any error now if you reload this page this should work okay you can see that we got the payload and now if you try it from the terminal it will work there as well okay all right congratulations you have learned how to create rest api in nextjs 14 using the app directory structure in this tutorial we have covered setting up a Next.js project, creating API routes, handling different HTTP methods, implementing error handling and input validation, and deploying the API to a hosting platform. Building APIs is a crucial skill for modern web development and Next.js 14's app directory simplifies the process while providing improved performance and developer experience. I encourage you to explore the Next.js documentation further and experiment with additional features and libraries to to enhance your API development skills. Remember, practice is key to mastering any new technology. I hope that this video has provided you value. If this was helpful, then please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to get notified for my upcoming videos. Also, please like and share this video. And if you have any questions or any thoughts or any suggestions or feedback, then please leave them in the comment section below and I would do my best to reply them as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.